Oh, it's more steps than I anticipated. Hello. Um, yeah, so hi, I'm Sarah. Um, I'm a digital marketer, uh, a comms expert, and student engagement professional. And I'm not joking, that's not a joke job title. It is actually my job. I am head of student engagement and communications at the University of Oxford Student Union. Say that 10 times fast. Um, <clears throat> I'm going to talk to you today about getting millennials' attention on social media. And um, uh, I have to apologize in advance for the clickbaity title because <laughs> millennials hate being called millennials. So really kind of what we're probably thinking about is how to get people who are younger than us' is attention on social media. But I'm actually going to talk to you about how to get students' attention on social media because that's my background, that's my bag. So we're going to go through kind of the main uh, demographic sort of generations of people who actually go to university. Um, and I'm going to use examples from my own family here. It's my mum and dad on their way to watch Wales v England rugby. I'm not going to tell you how that particular result panned out. But they are typically born between 1946 and 1964. Next, we have another member of my family, Mr. West, Generation X. They are typically born between 1965 and 1979. Then we have Generation Y, a.k.a. Millennials. No idea who that idea is. They are generally born between 1980 and 1994. So, um, it's kind of the key um, defining factors of this generation um, is that they are boomerangers. We tend to go home. <laughs> When we, when we run out of money. Uh, we have quite low trust in businesses. Um, we, are quite, we have quite a fragmented culture. We're not entirely sure what we're meant to be or who we're meant to be or who we're meant to be with. Um, and we heavily rely on tech. Phones are constantly in our hands. So as a general rule, search is still incredibly important for millennials or Generation Y. We are a frequent user of apps. Uh, social media masters, which basically means reviews are really important to us. Opinion is really important to us. Uh, not using social media very well. We're probably not going to enjoy your brand. Um, we are kind of the UGC OGs. Um, and we're really interested in story-based marketing. Then we move on to Gen Z. That's my little brother. Um, and they are typically born between 1995 and 2013. Um, now, Gen Z or Gen Z, if you speak correctly, are generally interested in social activism. They're micro-interactors. They love a Snapchat. They love an Instagram story. Uh, they hate ads, um, and, they, and they work super hard. So as a general rule, um, business interaction needs to be ever more personal with Generation Z or Z. Um, however, they're not idiots. They know that brands are brands, so you have to also be authentic. Um, earned beats owned. Um, so social responsibility really gets them excited. If you're, if you're talking about something they're interested in, like racial equality, uh, gender, they're going to they're click on your content more. Um, and they are very sophisticated decision makers. We talk about tech natives being millennials, but it's actually probably more this generation. And of course, it's mobile only uh, rather than mobile first. Um, I want to talk to you a little bit about student preconceptions, and don't worry, we all do it. Um, and I want to kind of talk to you about this sort of idea, this house that you've built of what a student is in your head. Um, and that is that they're typically 18 years old, they're probably in a full-time degree, um, the laptop might have been bought by mum and dad before they go, and socialising is super important to them. Um, we've kind of got this in our head when we think of a university student. But university students tw age 20 and under actually only make up 41% of the population going to university. University students 21 to 30 plus, and bearing in mind when I worked at the University of Northampton, the oldest undergrad that I saw was 66 years of age, it makes up 59% of the population. We often think that the most popular way to study at university is this kind of three-year undergrad move away from home uh, type thing, when actually part-time <laughs> is the um, most popular way to study at university. And I, have to, I do have to say, trying to find a shocked seagull was quite difficult, so I'm quite proud of that. Um, <clears throat> instead, why don't we, consider, why don't we consider, consider students as they actually are? People who kind of make up all of those uh, generations and demographics I just spoke to you about, but they're also interested in questioning their sexual identity. They're interested in campaigning for gender-neutral toilets. They don't drink alcohol. Well, some of them do, let's face it. Um, they, work, they work for money, but they volunteer for experience. They're savvy. They know what they want to get out of their degree. They discuss things like allyship as standard. 
When I first started in higher education, coming from an agency background, I did my typical hexagon, let's have a look at stakeholders type approach. And this is just one for uh, the University of Oxford Student Union, for example. I had no idea what to do really with that information. Um, and what became really apparent is when you're working with students and for students and you're trying to market to students, is you just have to have like tangible ideas. You can't just say, right, okay, uh, uh, local schools and colleges are a primary stakeholder. You need to go at that with kind of an idea of how you're going to interact with them and what you're going to do that's meaningful. So I sort of overlaid my typical hexagon approach with this and I thought right local schools and colleges they're thought leaders can they come in and do talks can I go and do talks there um, that's like perfect social media content um, plus it means that I'm probably going to get more students from them woohoo um, we have a look at local communities um, and instead of kind of saying uh, uh, and instead of doing the typical stakeholder thing um, I'm going to speak to Oxford I'm going to speak to Northampton I thought right why don't we talk more about social innovation because that's actually what local communities are going to be interested in Ironically, uh, students absolutely hate labels. So when you're kind of coming up with your marketing campaigns and you're saying, right, I'm going to lump this kind of group together and lump this group together, or call them millennials, do not. Um, instead, let's kind of look at a more holistic approach. Let's look at lifestyles, let's look at behaviors, and let's look at attitudes. And I'm going to go through these three with you today. Um, how? <laughs> Forgot about that slide. Uh, right, let's have a look at lifestyles first and foremost. So student lifestyles, they are interested in things that probably you don't consider. They want things to change. They're interested in social innovation. They join things like clubs and societies. They join things like campaigns, which are liberation groups, which lobby. They are interested in uh, things like gender equality, racial diversity. They're interested in positive mental health. If the, the more different you are, the, the, the more diverse you are, the more likely you are to be celebrated at university. Gender schmender. They don't care about that anymore. Um, they are changed focused and, and they truly believe um, in healthy mind, healthy body concept. If we look at student behaviors, um, every time I've interacted with students, the first thing they've said to me is, I don't know why you don't talk to us more. This is, the, this is something that really comes through um, for when I, uh, as, as a marketer. Why don't you just ask us? Um, the best way to do that and the best way to get to know, to know them and talk to them more is through good old-fashioned community management. And I'm afraid to say that nothing, for me, beats manual community management. So I'm really sorry if you're a, a creator of a tool. Please don't kill me afterwards. Um, and to do this is quite simple. You just have your community management spreadsheet. You go searching for conversations. You go looking at what students are talking about whilst at university and whilst not at university. And you interact with them. And you end up with some really nice wins that you wouldn't maybe normally get, especially if they end up using all of their hashtags in one massive thing here. Uh, so they're really, uh, really, really difficult to kind of search on a tool. And you end up with something that's quite cool. Students. Um, the great thing about students is they are on a constant uh, um, and consistent cyclical um, sort of uh, way through their university uh, degree. So they can, uh, we always know that students are going to graduate. We always knew that there are going to be students taking exams. We always know that there are students who are going to be volunteering. We always know there are students who are going to matriculate, i.e. enroll. Um, there are student parents, there are students supporting lecturers in strikes, there are students who are interested in sport Wednesday afternoon, little tip there. Um, and there are students who are interested in kind of uh, liberation and lobbying. So we know that from our community management, we can interact with that uh, using our community management. Also, widely available data are motivations, why, why students go to university. One is the course content, two is the learning, Three is the career they get at the end of it. So when I'm putting together an idea of what a student wants, it's less this, deciding what to do with my life, because all my friends are going, because my mum and dad expected of me, and it's more what career basically am I going to get out of it, and is my learning experience going to be good? Um, when you're putting together a timeline, this lovely cyclical timeline, you ha already have a pre-made timeline of useful information on UCAS. Uh, this is widely available. Um, this is basically when the application dates need to be in, 
um, for specific courses, for specific universities. This is a wonderful uh, resource to start with. Then you can put that into your kind of standard annual content planner. Um, and that combined with your community management, you start to build up this idea of month on month. You start to think, right, students in October are going to be uh, really interested in kind of feeling that they belong because that's when enrollment starts. Students in December are really homesick. Students in September really want the discounts ahead of, the uni uh, ahead of university. Just a quick review of that section. Find the stories, utilize community management, look at UCAS key dates, um, and consider in, uh, meaningful engagements versus just engagement. Finally, we're going to look at attitudes. Um, when we look at attitudes as marketers within higher education, money is the biggest thing, uh, the biggest sort of attitude that we look at. Um, and it's really important to note that students only get their student loan or maintenance grant after they enroll, and that's in October. So when you're kind of marketing to students or your clients are marketing to students, it's really important to kind of understand to not miss, this, the, the, not miss the October window. What tends to happen is all the student deals end in September. Lots of students do not have disposable income outside of their jobs. So that sounds like a really obvious thing to say, but um, consider the audience that you're speaking to and consider that money is constantly on their mind. They pay minimum, minimum, £9,250 to go to university. Um, can now, consider money being on the mind of somebody who's paying 50 k a year to go to university, University of Oxford, executive MBA. They have, got, they have got lots and lots of things to think about, lots of things to spend their money on. Their attitude towards money is different. It doesn't matter what demographic they're part of, their attitude towards money is different. However, they want to change this. They want to they go to university to change the world. They want to go to university to do something positive. So how do we engage with them on social media? Easiest thing to do is to engage with the causes that they're interested in and the local community that they are a part of. And that's where, of course, your um, geo-targeting comes in. That's where, of course, your community management comes in that's manual. Um, retweet. Work with universities, work with students, ask for opinion, ask for blog content, celebrate diversity. Student takeovers are a really, really good way to do this. Actually utilizing students' um, expertise um, to inform your content, bringing them in even, <laughs> might sound scary. This is um, University of Northampton, a load of students took over our job for an entire week the scariest thing I've ever done, like handing over the keys to um, social media to a bunch of students. It was the best thing I ever did. Basically, what happened was um, uh, uh, we kind of gave them the framework in which to work, but they produced the content. And they produced a lot of content. And they, they produced content that was meaningful and worked um, and uh, something that Northampton is still using today. Just a very quick review of those couple of slides. When we think of attitudes, we always think of money, to be honest. They want to celebrate the world, but give them opportunities to influence your content. There is a big HE secret, um, and that is we're not very good at marketing. <laughs> we have absolutely no idea um, how brands or how products or services can assist our students. Not really. What we get is this kind of free rail card if you take out a Santander bank account type thing. Stu and, it, and if we don't know, students don't know. But what we do have is access to students. What we do have is access to the ones who are actually currently going to university and all their diverse, uh, wonderful um, -ness. Uh, So find the gap, work with us, um, work with me. Um, definitely, when you're, when you're kind of putting together all these wonderful annual content plans, have a think about what you can do to diversify your content. And if you can bring students into that journey, then you're going to be really, really successful. But yeah, that's it. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thanks so much for that, Sarah. I really enjoyed that. So, our third session, the complete.